Hi, we're here at Mohican Lodge in Ohio, where it brings back a lot of memories back in the day before we had any money in debt. Uh, State Park, we would come here, it was cheap, and you see the beautiful <laughs> nature. Yes. And just spend some time with our family and the Lord trying to figure life out. And so yeah, it it's, a, it's a great place. It is. It's a place we have so many memories because even after we brought our family here, we started bringing our teams and small groups and leadership groups and uh, seeking God, praying around the fireplace, chatting, building relationships, which really is what life is about, doing life together in the kingdom of God. And through those times, the day of small beginnings, we built something with God's help. And so we wanted to share this with you today because it's a place we believe whether you're at a small beginning or you're in a new beginning or you're looking to God for that next thing that he has for you to do, yeah. we wanna share that with you mm -hmm. today. And I know Gary, you just did a message out of your new book. I just launched a brand new book That's called great. The Power Provision. It's the fourth in the Financial mm -hmm. Revolution series. And this book's a little different, it's a great, second book if you've seen the other books but it's really i think a great it's first my favorite book. well i took time to go into detail i had mm -hmm. you know emails come in over the years and i kept those and so i answer a lot of questions on the process mm -hmm. and the how to's and some of the questions people ask a lot about the kingdom i think you'll find the the book very helpful of course and we just taught from the book chapter five just a little bit at, at uh, faith life church and I think you'll enjoy it. It'll give you a flavor of the book. And I think, why don't we just go there right now and you'll get to see for yourself. And I want to teach today out of chapter five of our new book. The title's chapter is Empowering Your Provision. So I want to dig into that. Our key scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Most of you can probably quote it. Remember this. Now this is Paul teaching at Corinth. And he says, remember this, which implies what? That he has already taught them this and is reminding them of this as he's coming to collect an offering for a, a situation. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will reap what? Sparingly. And whoever sows generously will reap generously. All right. This, this is an easy sentence to say, but I believe that so many Christians have no clue what it's talking about. I believe they understand the, pr the process maybe I need to, to give. But there's more to that sentence that you need to understand. So, for instance, so, let's assume you know nothing. What do you mean so? Where do I sow? What do I sow? When do I sow? And then it talks about reaping. What does that mean? Reaping? I mean, how do I reap? What do you mean? Do I, what, where, when, I mean, how, what, I mean, what, do, you know, you understand what I'm saying? There's more to this equation than just like, see, most Christians view this sentence, like I'm going to give and it's going to show up, but you forgot that sowing and reaping are verbs and you are part of this equation. But to be part of the equation, you must know you're part of the equation. And you must know the function. See, a farmer, he understands the complete process from day one. He has a clear picture of harvest. He knows the timing, how, when, fertilizer. He cultivates. He knows he has two kinds of equipment to sow and equipment to reap, combines. He understands what the harvest looks like, the distinct season of harvest, the market for his harvest. He already has it all figured out. But Christians don't. And this is why so many people fail to see the kingdom of God operate in their life is because they have this God in a box, God in the mailbox mentality that is not accurate. You can, are you excited or are you getting nervous? I don't know. I can't tell. <laughs> so in my book, I've, of course, I take the three previous books. I get emails with questions. So one of the intent I had with this fourth book was to clarify some of the process. Everyone say the word process. This is a process. Sowing and reaping is a process. And so I clarify a lot of questions in this book. It's a great first book and it's a great second book. It's a great book to have. But there's five steps. I lay out the five steps that God taught us how to sow and reap in this book. And so we're going to spend a little bit of time today just touching on the first, pro the first step of that process, which is sowing. Well, I know how to sow, Pastor Gary. You know, you mean giving? I don't think you'll probably, maybe you do. Let's find out. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, Drenda and I lived there for nine, well, about nine years, and we bought a house. 
And we were going to be uh, hobby farmers, if you will. We planted a garden. Now, we really didn't know much about planting gardens, but we had a patch of ground. And so we tilled it up and got the little packets with the pictures on it and looked at the pictures and anticipated the harvest, right? And a month or so went by and not much happened. These little corn plants were about that high. And they had just a little miniature, little withered up little ears on there. And you can't eat those. And uh, our neighbor came by and saw our garden and began to laugh. We asked him what was wrong with our garden. He said, well, he said, you planted it in, in, in the shade. You planted it in the shade, in the woods, in the shade. It's not going to grow there. So see, the knowledge, you can laugh, yeah. I know you would know better than that. But anyway, so the knowledge you have of the process is critical to the harvest, the end result, right? There's many types of giving in the Bible. So let's talk about one right now you've probably heard of a lot called the tithe. Now, the tithe is, is well-defined in the Bible, and some people say it's passed away. It has not. It's a law of the kingdom. And so it says this in Malachi chapter 3, bring the whole tithe. Why did it say that? Because Israel was not bringing the whole tithe. They're bringing 3%, 4%, whatever they thought was, you know, what they could afford. But this is a law, right? If an airplane tries to take off, and let's say it needs to reach 80 knots to lift off, and it's going 60, that's good enough. You're not going to lift off because the law is not functioning yet. And so if you want to tithe, it's 10%. And if you're not tithing, you're saying, oh, my goodness, how can we afford that? And I would say you can't afford not to. Because if it's a law, you get to reap the benefits of the tithe. Okay, so bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Now, the Levites, the priest of that day, received their food from the people's tithe. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I'll not throw open the floodgates of heaven. Pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. And that's where most people that talk about the tithe stop. How many have heard that if I just tithe, I'm going to have such a blessing I can't contain it? Any of you? Because that's how it's usually taught. But that's not totally accurate because that's not the whole picture. Now, it does say that, but let's take a look at this and examine the tithe. All right, so it says, see if I'll not throw open the floodgates of heaven. What does a floodgate hold back? Everyone say water. You're talking to an agricultural society here. So when he opens the floodgates of heaven, he's talking about rain. Why do I know that? Because verse 11, he says, I'm going to open the floodgates of heaven and I will prevent pest from devouring your crops. And the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe. The fungus disease is not going to wipe out your crop. Locusts are not going to wipe out your crop. So it says this, that God says, I'll throw open the floodgates of heaven. I will prevent. So understand this. What he's saying is the tithe is a fence. It gives God the legal right. He's going he's to do his part. The rains are going to come. You're going to have fantastic crops. Satan can't destroy them. I said Satan can't destroy them. God stands, God himself, by tithing, you've given God the jurisdiction to stand between you and Satan who wants to wipe out your crops, your business, whatever. And what you build inside that fence is going to prosper. It's going to grow without interference. But notice that you have to grow something. So the tithe, God can rebuke the devourer but you have to grow something inside the fence. I'm going to prevent pests from devouring your crops. What are you growing? Your business. What you put your hands to, right? Are you getting this? All right, so the tithe is a legal fence around what you are building, what you grow. And that's the tithe. Why? Because Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy and so this goes back to the, to the garden where God instituted the tithe to stand between Adam and Eve. He gave them that instruction. We see that in Genesis 4. Cain and Abel, I want have time to teach it today. But the tithe goes back to that. As long as Satan is on the earth, the tithe is in place. Just understand that, okay? That's one type of giving. Number two is generosity. Proverbs chapter 19, 17. If you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord and he will repay you. How many would agree that you probably can't get extremely wealthy with repayment? Are you with me? I mean, if you're getting if you're repaid, I mean, obviously, 
the flow, you, you know, generosity, there's a flow to it, and God keeps bringing it in, but there's, there's another kind of giving I want to talk about today. So I always say the tithe and generosity is a lifestyle. It's who you are, not what you do. The tithe and generosity is God's compassion, his heart. That's just who you are. You're generous in nature. You, you tithe, worship God, that fence comes up. You grow great things. Are you with me so far? Those are, that's a lifestyle. But I want to talk today about a different kind of giving that sowing seed, which has an intentional and specific harvest. This is above those two kinds of giving that you can actually sow in a time of need to, re to reap a specific harvest. An intentional giving is what I'm talking about. It's always done with a defined harvest and it's intentional. And usually you sow into a kingdom assignment. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.